Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing. I'm Matthew Buzzy. This is John Burek. This is a Dell Precision laptop, but it is not the star of the show today, John. Uh, laptop memory, computer memory, has kind of become the set it and forget it component of, of PCs and PC builds over the years. You choose your, you choose your capacity, you plug and play, um, but Dell's trying to change that as far as the real standard of design for memory modules themselves going forwards. Uh, they see a limitation and a problem with the current SODIMM solution that has been in use for years, and they, uh, they have a plan and they have a new module um, ready to, to hopefully overtake uh, SODIMM in the years to come. This is the first laptop we're seeing with it, and we're going to open it up and show it to you. Um, why don't you give me a little bit of a background and so a so dim rundown? Sure. Um, so what we have over here is a standard um, laptop memory module that uh, many of us have seen over the years called so dim. Mm -hmm. um, typically, if you have a laptop that has upgradable memory, and not all do, it'll be uh, in a module about um, this size and shape. Um, you can typically find them in a laptop layered um, in maybe a bank of two with one overlapping the other. This has been sort of the um, standard for workstation and gaming laptops and other power user laptops for a long time now. Um, that's changing with this particular laptop, um, which is the first model that Dell has rolled out with a new type of memory called CAM. Now CAM stands for Compression Attached Memory Module. Um, and we will take this machine apart and show you exactly what the compression attached mm -hmm. aspect of it is, as well as a bunch of other stuff. Right. It looks different. Obviously, it solves a different problem. Um, we'll get into that, what that problem is. And it, it has different goals than the SODIMM. And that's why it, uh, it will look so different. So we pre-loosen the screws on this because nobody really wants to sit there watching us unscrew eight, eight screws or whatever it is. Pretend we unscrewed these around the edges here, and then John's just going to lift uh, the panel away. Yes, here we go. Yeah, ordinarily, you'd have to sort of pry around the edges with a sponger or fingernails. But here we go. All right. So inside the machine, I'm going to turn the machine around actually for the camera to get the uh, mm -hmm. interesting part closer. So um, standard laptop design inside, battery, um, cooling for the CPU and GPU, um, the M2 uh, storage over here, um, another M2 over here. I believe this machine actually has two M2s um, in RAID format, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, uh, from looking at the specs for it. But this may not look familiar over here. That is, that is the new... That is the new hero, the new star of the show. Right, so I actually pre-removed four screws here, one, two, three, four, around the edges of this module, but this is what's known as a CAM memory module. Um, you'll notice that it kind of looks like an SO DIMM module in that you've got a, a PCB with a bunch of uh, integrated circuits on it, uh, but it's much bigger. Mm -hmm. um, it's flatter. Um, if you uh, had a solution here that had two stacked SO DIMM slots, which typically in a machine that has multiple SODIMs, you'd have one, and then you have another one sort of um, set next to it and overlapping like a bit. Stagger kind of, and in a, in a line. Right, and if you have them staggered, that adds to uh, vertical height. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and even even just the height of this is a lot thinner um, in and of itself. Right, so um, I'm gonna do some unscrewing action over here. Like I said, I took out these four. There's two more screws over here on this mm -hmm. uh, metal plate. Um, so let's back into the SODIM issue as far as Dell sees it. We'll call it, we'll call it an issue. It's, um, it's obviously still working fine. This is in every, you know, pretty much every laptop today is that's what you're going to find. But um, the issue they see is a performance ceiling either in the next generation, maybe the one after that. But really, um, there is a speed ceiling that it's going to, they believe it's going to hit and uh, the gradual increase of RAM speed or that has been increasing over time until now will eventually basically stop. And that doesn't affect your everyday or budget laptops really too much because they're not concerned with pushing that margin, pushing the envelope on RAM speed, but high-end workstations, gaming laptops, things that really go in for performance, um, they're not going to be able to make use of the either like fast new processors or your RAM's going to basically be the bottleneck. Right. So yeah. enter, we, enter CAM with its potential higher uh, memory speeds. Here. Right. So the thing to bear in mind is that with uh, recent um, Intel and now um, AMD generations of CPU, we're moving to DDR5 memory. Mm -hmm. um, with DDR5 memory, you have um, you know, certain maximum speeds, and when you have multiple modules, say going from uh, two modules to four modules, you may see a, a reduction in maximum speed. Right. The thing with CAM is, is it's reducing the um, memory solution to one module. Mm -hmm. um, so you basically have everything on one. You don't have the uh, penalty associated with having multiple slots and multiple sets of traces going right. to the CPU. And Matt, you can get into that a little bit about traces. Mm -hmm. um, but before you do that, um, I'm just going to do a little bit of an unveil here. There's a little metal plate here. We did do this before and took it apart. And uh, that exposes the entire module. You could take the module out, which I'm going to do, and place it over here on the battery. And you'll notice here that there's a strip. Um, it's an interface strip that basically um, lies between the memory module and the motherboard. And if you take the memory strip out, which in this model 
is removable apparently for servicing, I think uh, Dell put it. You'll see that there's a whole bunch of um, small contacts underneath, and it's very much like the bottom of a CPU. Right. So in referring to it as a compression attached memory technology, you can, you can see, see it in action. Yeah. Right. You have um, the um, connect the contacts on the motherboard, the um, interposer here, which lies in between the two and sort of goes in those screw posts, and then the memory goes on top of it, like so. The memory, excuse me, the memory module goes on top of it like so. Sorry, I'm a little, there we go. And then this piece goes on top of that. And then when you screw it down, it sort of presses the contacts together. Mm -hmm. um, and one uh, report that I've seen around this, that an advantage of that is the actual fact that the contacts are sandwiched in between these various layers is that they don't get exposed to air mm -hmm. as much as they do in a SO dim design. Really just sitting. Open. Right. In an SO dim design, you'll have these sort of in a slot, but the tops of the modules are exposed and there isn't as much mm -hmm. um, sort of insulation against outside air and you know, oxidation and things of that right. sort. Um, but one of the uh, things that I alluded to before was about uh, traces, mm -hmm. trace length. Maybe you can get into that a little bit. Yeah, so the way it works currently is the, um, basically in addition to the speed, the, the cam, I'll give you an overview first, the cam should also save in the footprint design of the PCB and the motherboard. It should give space back to the motherboard to either use more components, to make things more efficient, um, the trace length can be half as short in the CAM modules as it is in the existing SODIM modules. So that is both more power efficient and can do, uh, that is part of the higher speeds it offers because the shorter that trace length is in communicating with the processor, uh, the faster it also is. So, and, and the more power efficient, and, as you mentioned. Right. right. Yeah, the, um, the thing here is um, you were alluding to more motherboard mm -hmm. uh, real estate being freed up. It looks like it's taking up a lot of room, right? It's yeah, kind of, so it's it's kind of that is one of the cons. Yeah. It is clearly a wide, this is a 32 gigabyte module, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, usually you'd probably have multiple sticks of, right. of SODIM to, to right. uh, get reach that capacity. Um, the idea is the width is made up for in the height. So mm -hmm. it's, it's flatter, it's obviously more, more memory on one module, but it's one Z, Z height saving uh, module. And Layer, right. Say, yeah, so you can lift it away and theoretically, it's not really in use here. I, this probably depends on the individual laptop design or any solutions that um, you know manufacturers come up with in the future. But there is space beneath, uh, and also because of the the trace taking less room on the um, the, the main board PCB, uh, there's more space for other modules there as well. Right. In theory, you could have a like a very low height um, M2 slot underneath here, sort of under underhanging, is mm -hmm. that, if that's a word, underhanging the cam module. Um, whereas with a SO DIM design, you're going to have a big bulky slot. There's going to be a bunch of traces going back to the CPU, and yeah. the whole works kind of takes up the footprint that the actual modules themselves take up. So um, interestingly, Dell is going to. I think in this future module, even when this does get adopted more widely, because the laptop will be able to be configured with DIM, it's not going to replace it entirely. It's certainly not in the near future. Um, they're going to use this interposer module that can be can when you order it can be outfitted with. Uh, a CAM module or or a SODIM module, right? So, so they can so they can have this the same laptop and do both depending on what you choose on the website when you're when you're right. ordering, presumably. Yeah, we have some some pictures. It's basically like a big um, apparatus that fits over here, interfaces with the uh, the contacts on the board, mm -hmm. but provides the SODIM slots, slots that you're used to. Right. So you could do that. And I guess during a transition period, you know whether this gets adopted or mm -hmm. not, um, you could have chassis designs that can take one or the other. Yes, and talk right. about the adoption, because that's obviously one of the big things here is, this is a big shakeup. It's not the first attempt um, any manufacturers made to you know change the standard. That's a very hard thing to do, um, not only because for the, for the single company, they have to change their production design, but if you truly want this to be widely adopted by other laptop manufacturers and uh, both major you know chip makers, um, there needs to be a lot of buy-in. So why don't you give some context to what is happening there? Right, so Dell has some patents on this mm -hmm. um, and is sort of the driving force behind this initiative. But they've been working with Intel, um, they've been working with JEDEC, the uh, memory consortium, mm -hmm. to uh, codify and try and get approval for standards around CAM. Um, the question will become in coming years, you know, how many uh, OEMs sign on to this? Mm -hmm. um, what's the situation with uh, Dell's patents? Will they have to pay Dell royalties or not? That's all sort of up in the air and yep. how much those royalties might be and how much of a payoff is there to moving towards this. Of mm -hmm. course, you got to get to the point where um, enough of these modules are being manufactured in volume for it to make sense to do this. Um, the other aspect of this too is, on top of all that, it's kind of a niche solution just by the nature of what it is, right? right. Which laptops will make most use of this. And there are plenty. I mean, a lot of those laptops get sold, business machines, gaming machines, um, but it is not, it is not a catch-all solution because it might be cheaper and make more sense to keep using SODIM at 
lower right. price points. Or for that matter, surface mounted memory like uh, Apple and Microsoft tend to do, they will tend to have different SKUs of a laptop, but mm -hmm. the motherboard design will actually be designed with the memory soldered down. Right. And if you're trying to do a really, really thin mm -hmm. design or minimize sort of the number of um, sort of SKUs that you offer, you may just offer a couple of versions of a laptop with the memory soldered down and right. sold, you know, as a as a, a variety that you can't upgrade. Right. Um, so you'll probably see this mostly, as I think we mentioned, in workstations and gaming machines, mm -hmm. the kind of machines. Certainly that at first, at first, right. I say, you know, <laughs> uh, right. already down the line. But there is there is seemingly buy-in from other other manufacturers, and Dell is open. If there's a better solution, they'll have it. They just they think more than anything uh, from speaking with them. I think that SODIM needs to be solved. A, a solution needs to be found, whether it's this or another. And right now, this seems to have buy-in from from chip makers and from other OEMs. Right. So and we'll see what this consortium manages to. Uh, enacts in the future. Right. And one of the solutions that they're trying to solve, or one of the issues that they're trying to solve here is sort of peak performance mm -hmm. for um, memory bandwidth, right? Or peak memory bandwidth. Yeah. Um, and that's mostly going to become an issue on gaming machines or workstation machines. You know, your standard consumer laptop, whether you're getting, you know, peak DDR5 speeds as they are today, whether yep. they're implemented by SODIM or this, kind of probably doesn't have a big in, you know, impact on your spreadsheet, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but if you're doing, you know, 3D modeling or the kinds of things that- Or those station, really good spreadsheets. Yeah, the really good, really, right, yeah, the three, yeah. the 4D <laughs> spreadsheets, yep. right, yeah. Um, yeah, that's where this kind of, you know, memory bandwidth technology may come into play and, you know, be a bottleneck when you're pairing it with, you know, really high-end CPU right. and other high-end parts. So, um, so we'll see where this goes. I mean, right now it's only in the Dell 7970 Precision. Workstation? 60, 70, 60, 70, 70, 60. 70. I'm looking at our notes over there off screen. 70, 70, 70. 70. 70. Yeah. yes. Um, and this is just to get an idea of what kind of machine this is that, you know, it's outfitted. It's a Core i9 with HX um, C, you know, class CPUs. That's top of the line Intel mobile chip. Right. You know, the two SSDs, 32 gigs of memory, and um, workstation RTX graphics. Yep. So uh, a powerful machine in its own right, but. You know, we've reviewed a lot of precisions. The focus here is is the cam. Um, right. We were, you know, we were we were briefed and given background on why this why this might be important, and hopefully, if it is a better solution, uh, become the standard down the line. Right. For now, this is the one machine um, on the market that has it. Mm -hmm. And um, just for uh, you know the audience's sake, we'll do one more removal of the module. Yep. Um, taking off the uh, sort of the compression bar there. Here's the module. We'll take it out. You can see the ICs on this side. And then we're going to flip it over, and you can see the lovely, lovely contacts on the other side along the top. And then take out the interposer so you can sort of see what's going on there. The contacts for that uh, interface with the cam module there, and then the underside looks pretty similar that interfaces with the motherboard. So uh, anybody who's updated or uh, excuse me, upgraded a um, Intel CPU in the last 10 years or an AM5 mm -hmm. AMD chip, we'll see a similar sort of contact um, right. design, you know, as uh, they're using here. Without the as much risk of pins, the, the great fear of uh, yes. bending pins. Well, now that you mention it, that might be why this inter intermediary module is removable, because that strikes me as the thing that would most likely be damaged right. in a... Um, not that you'd be swapping these out every day, mm -hmm. but that strikes me as the one sort of fail point of you know, interfacing you know, with this. So right. if you don't have it actually on the motherboard, you know, it could also be maybe a Z height is issue too, right? You need to set the module a certain distance above the board. And this right. is just conjecture. So that is, yeah. So yeah. right. So maybe you have these in different thicknesses. That makes sense. Like, and then know. if you could, if it's decided that you want to put something under it, a, a slightly taller, right, higher mounted one, right, then may, it gives you additional clearance under there. Yeah. There's a uh, there's a, a layer under here, and we you know kind of peeked under it to see if there was <laughs> anything going on under there, and uh, just just board. Nope, just board. Yep, so uh, nothing's being uh, done underneath the cam module in this mm -hmm. case, but again, it, that could be part of a future design that right. you can sandwich more parts under the cam module. Yeah, So, and this module also, one of the other cons, kind of, I mean, you hopefully just buy the capacity you need, especially if you're configuring something you know you want to build for speed. Um, as you can see, everything is attached to one module, so upgrading it gets a little tricky because you can't either just add a second stick or right. yes, add point. onto this. It is one unit, so uh, different different RAM size capacities are different physical sizes on these and it's all in the same thing so it's kind of one or right. nothing right so. yeah that's a good point right with um, an SODIM design you might be able to swap out just one module or you may have empty module empty module slots mm -hmm. that you can add more modules to here it's kind of you get what you get when you buy the machine and if right. you want more you kind of got to replace it all yeah right? it has dual quad channel support but 
right. it's it's stuck on one <laughs> on one thing. Right. So exactly. So if you um, are um, looking at configuring a machine with CAM, you have to be extra sort of conscious of um, the upgrade path. Mm -hmm. If you think you might need, say, 64 gigs versus 32 or 128 versus 64 at the time of purchase, because you don't want to buy that RAM twice if you don't have to, right? Especially because the foreseeable future, these upgrades might well be, you know, cost a premium because mm -hmm. this is a nascent thing. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, um, and I think even the compon components and the ability to make use of its maximum speeds are not yet in place. Like, that is part of adopting the standards. Building, you don't need the transposer. You get boards. You get uh, everything designed to make use of the cam. So right. even if even if it starts to get adopted, it's going to be it's going to be a long term vision be a while. of, of right. replacing uh, replacing sodium. Right. This really maybe comes more into play when like DDR six hits, and we're mm -hmm. just getting into DDR five in the last year or so. Yeah. So um, a very future looking memory technology here. We're glad that Dell sent us this precision machine to mm -hmm. check it out. Um, but will this be coming to a laptop near you soon? Mm -hmm. Unless you buy this particular precision, right. hard to say, right? Mm -hmm. But um, we will be following this in the coming year or years mm -hmm. as you know, CAM either rises or falls. Yep. Yeah. So Thanks there so we much. have it. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. tuning in and uh, check back for more on CAM in the future.